Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is part three in unit two, the chemistry of life. And in this video cast, we're going to focus on two properties of water, surface tension and capillary action. Okay, we've already talked about how water is a very cohesive molecule, which means it sticks to other water molecules uh, fairly tightly with all these little hydrogen bonds. And if you imagine a dome-shaped pile of water, like we see in this picture, you can see that each little water molecule is attracted to the, its neighbors, the ones near it. And the water molecules near the surface of the dome here can only be attracted downward, so to speak, towards their neighbors beneath them. And they're not attracted to the air out here. So this produces a very tight skin, or a surface tension, over the surface of a bead of water, like, for example, piled up on a piece of glass or something. And this surface tension is pretty resilient to rupturing, to breaking, and this is important in um, many, many different ways in ecosystems. Um, a, lot of, a lot of insects actually are so lightweight, and they have hairs or oils on their feet that keep them from sinking, so they can actually walk on the surface tension and hunt on the surface tension. For example, this spider, if you notice each one of its little feet is making a dimple in the surface tension of the water because little hairs on the ends of its feet won't get wet. They're hydrophobic, and so they literally push the surface of the water down without breaking it. Uh, you can see it here on this, this little insect called a water strider. This is another predator that can live on the surface of water and use the surface tension as its niche. Okay, so you, that's an important word. Remember, the niche is like the, the job description of an animal or a plant. And so the niche of this spider and this water strider are the surface of, of, of smooth ponds, places where there isn't current or a lot of wind. Um, this picture here is showing a paper clip actually floating on a surface tension of a glass of water. And this works because when they make paper clips, they're, they're coated with a little coating of oil to keep them nice and shiny. And this oil is hydrophobic enough to prevent the weight of the paper clip from breaking through the surface tension of the water. So altogether, surface tension is a lot like the stretched, the stretched drum head of a drum here, like in this picture. It's tight, and this tightness gives it some strength, which a, a lot of animals can take advantage of. Uh, this is a kind of a cool picture. If you look closely, this is a dragonfly which is caught in the surface tension of a pond. Okay, so here's the dragonfly's one, two, three, four wings, and here's his body. And because he's trapped, he can't get away. And all these little water striders, which are like predators now, they're feeding on this, um, this poor little dragonfly. So these predators are using the surface tension as a trap to catch their prey. And then once the, the prey is immobilized in the surface tension, they can come in and, and feed on it. Here's another I thought a pretty good picture. This is a female mosquito laying her eggs while she's perched on the surface tension of a pond. And her eggs are actually floating like a little raft on top of the surface tension. Uh, mosquitoes will only lay their eggs in stagnant water. Okay, and the word stagnant means the water's not moving and it's not circulating, which makes the surface tension nice and still for this little mosquito to land on and lay her eggs. If the surface is rippling at all because there's waves, then she can't land, so she won't lay her eggs there. So one of the ways to keep mosquitoes out of your fish pond or out of um, water features at your house is to make sure that your pond, okay, or your bird bath or whatever it is you have the water in has some type of fountain or something to make the water always move. And as long as the water's moving, mosquitoes won't lay their eggs in it, and you won't get a problem with mosquito babies or mosquito larvae growing in your pond. Okay, surface tension, and um, surface tension, which is produced by hydrogen bonds, is one effect, but we also have another effect, which is called capillary action. Now, capillary action is simply the movement of water up a surface, or up a thin tube. And you probably have heard of this in middle school when you talked about the meniscus. Okay? The meniscus is the curved surface of water inside of like a graduated cylinder or something. So if you were measuring you know, where the water level is in a graduated cylinder, you'd look at it at eye level and you'd measure it from the top of the meniscus because the water won't lay flat. And the reason why the water won't lay flat is the water molecules are actually attracted to the glass. So they actually climb a little bit up the sides. And the narrower the tube of glass, or the narrower the tube, the higher the water will move by capillary action. So when you put a really thin glass tube in liquid, the water can actually climb pretty high up sides of the glass by capillary action. If the tube is too wide, of course, they can't get too high, and gravity is going to keep it pretty low. Um, this is important in biology because this is how 
liquids can move through material without being pumped. So like in this paper towel, you see some water molecules being sucked upwards into the paper towel because the paper towel is absorbent. Okay, we call it an absorbent. Okay, absorbent means the same thing as adhesion. Okay, the water molecules are sticking to the, to the particles of paper and are being pulled up by capillary action. Okay, so capillary action allows water to be absorbed into materials like paper. Okay, so I like this little cartoon. Um, each little water molecule here is holding hands with nearby water molecules so you can see how it climbs up the glass tube. And this is important in plants because plants actually are made up of tubes. And these tubes carry water upwards through their tissues. So many of you may have seen this experiment with celery where you put a piece of celery in a glass of water with some red food dye. And after a few hours, you can see how the food dye has been transported upward through the tissues of the celery by capillary action. And the dye is being left behind in the leaves as the water evaporates from the leaves by transpiration. Remember that from the water cycle. Okay. Okay, we're going to stop there and pick up next time with part four where we're going to look at some other properties of water.